Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Geekcaster. I'm Michael. Michael, and we've got the one and only Davion Bussy. That's right. And we're wearing matching hats today. We didn't even plan this. How Yo, you doing, we're, Dave? We never did. We never did. We never did. How you doing? How you, you doing? I'm a little perplexed. Wow, what's up? AI is taking over. And that's the topic today. Artificial okay. intelligence. Okay. It's, I don't see the big deal. It's so, this is the thing. I didn't realize there were different types of AI. You never knew that? I did not know that. Yeah. I did not For know real? that. For real? So. So there's uh, four main types. There's reactive mm. machines, mm -hmm. right? Then you have limited memory. Mm -hmm. Then you have theory of mind. Mm -hmm. And then you have self-awareness. Mm -hmm. Now, going backwards, a lot of the movies we watch, self-awareness would be like the movie AI. Correct. Where you start to become self-aware, right? Mm -hmm. Then theory of mind is more learning the world and you could actually build from memory information and it goes down from there for limited memory, um, and then you get down to reactive machines. So the reactive machines would be the bare minimum. Here's a bunch of tasks. You're supposed to red, press the red button when it glows, and that's it. Um, then limited grows, and then it gets all the way up to self-awareness. Why are you making that face? Yeah, because the key, I'm trying to do full, like, oh, movie theater screen on my screen. Okay. And I feel like he's going full. <laughs> well, you like, know what? What's going on? I could, let's see, I could do, just to make a little bit more fair here, let me, at least on my end, I could shave a little bit. But, yeah. But, I mean, that's the thing, right? Should we be fearful at all of the future? Like the movie show? I'm I'm one of those people I got to the point where it is what it is. Gotcha. And why is that? Because when you have people in society that wants to make changes and you try to warn them and you try to tell them mm -hmm. and nobody's listening to you, mm -hmm. that's when it came to relationship. Nobody want to listen to you. Until they walk into that mind, that minefield, mm -hmm. and then when the negative things happen, or when you get explode, then you're like, "Why me? Yo, no, why me?" <laughs> and you be like, "No, I told you." Well, it's interesting, right? And I think we've mentioned this once before. There are programs that could write poems for you. They could write mm -hmm. um, your your term papers. Um, all the way, it. yep, and then um, this one program, I want a Michael Jackson style song with an Aerosmith rhythm section, and it'll create it. Um, this is interesting. Actually, a filmmaker actually was on the show, Wes, was yeah. saying that you could write a treatment for a film through AI. See, the thing is, I don't know how good stuff would, would you know, that would be. But if it's able to learn, I mean, it's just interesting. Like, who owns, like, copyright issues and creating, and it's just interesting where it was going to go. Um, in fact, you experimented with uh, AI with the pictures on your uh, Instagram. Yeah. And what'd you think of that? That was kind of neat. It was awesome. I, you know, it's like, whatever, you use my picture mm -hmm. of my regular human face and you mm -hmm. create a bunch of art. And I mean different type of art, like art that you see in a museum, to mm -hmm. anime, to... Right. 
I forgot the other art where they deal with cartoon characters. Mm -hmm. And I saw a lot of people do it at the same time, which is also interesting, right? Like, so many people had access to this technology that then you had a flood of people with the same style thing. They had the anime one, the art one, and it was cool. But then at the same time, it was like so many people did it. It wasn't, it wasn't as amazing anymore. Like some, right. it wasn't special anymore. Because um, once everybody do it, it's like, okay, hey, what's the next? Tr- right. right. Interesting to see where that's going to go. Well, a lot of companies are putting a lot of money behind this. It's the new thing. It's the dot com of today. Right. Right. But, but then where, where does this as a tool begin and end? Or is it just going to make everyone lazy? Because there's no reason to study how to draw anymore or paint anymore. If it's you could just... Be it depends on the individual. Mm-hmm. Because at the end of the day, like, you're going to utilize art in a way where you're like, okay... Because of boredom as a human being, you know, or just something because it's your hobby. The way AI is doing it is going to be more in a way where, okay, what's the what's the hottest artwork that this AI can do that no other human can do? Mm. And actually, it's interesting. In some ways, it makes. Art more valuable. Mm-hmm. The art that actually someone creates more valuable. Right. Yeah. But like the um, what's that thing called where people are drawing and selling their stuff? What's it called? Um, not tiffs. Um, not not gifts. You know that trend where people were selling artwork with um, cryptocurrency? Oh, I think I know. NFT? Right. Even those technically now are not as valuable. Because before it was like, okay, here's somebody created something and they threw it out. Now it's like, you could just sit there all day and just just talk all day. And by the end of the day, you have 5,000 pieces. Which for me, anyone that bought those NFTs a year or two ago, they're they're, mm-hmm. they're worthless to some degree. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> That's why you can't follow trends. Mm. There's times you follow trends and there's times you don't follow trends. When it comes to money, you don't follow trends. Interesting. Interesting. Well, you're big in investing online. So what, um, did you always feel, feel that way when you started to invest? Like, stay away from trends or you kind of got introduced through the trends and then changed the way you looked at it? Got introduced to trends and changed the, uh, changed the way that I looked at it because when you look at investments, you look at it as... First, you go by what is making money, but then also you got to look at it as, is this something I can ride or die with? Mm-hmm. If I take a loss, I take a loss. Mm-hmm. If I make money, it's still going to be a loss because you got to do tax. Mm-hmm. So, depending on how much you make out of it. Right. But, but if it's something like, like I like, stock into production companies and and stuff I utilize. So mm-hmm. you get more bank a buck. That's interesting. Any other no, Okay, so so what makes it interesting? Well no, just you know, technology has made it easier for people to do a lot of things that they just didn't have access to do. I mean, even the technology we're using to do the show. Right. There's more 
power in these little computers and everything in front of me to stream live than there were in 1950s television studio with hundreds of big boxes and tubes. And so there's definitely a plus when it comes to certain things, right? Like I don't, I have the power here to do a lot more than even this show. We just simply press record, stream, whatever, but I could actually do almost everything that a TV studio can do, which is interesting. Right. But then doesn't that helps me, but then it takes away job. Right. There's a bunch of people that I technically do not need because of the technology. Correct. Because it's less labor work. It's more labor work on Mm -hmm. you, but less responsibilities on everybody else. Mm -hmm. So let's say for somebody that you have as a co-host, you're doing the studio work because you're, that's everything is connected to what you have. Compared to me, all I need is a laptop and be on a streaming network. I mean, not streaming network, but a video chat. Right, right. It's, it's just interesting because technically on that end, you're the cameraman. If you think of it that way, so think of it as, as a laptop, you're, you're being the cameraman and the subject. You're basically doing a selfie, a professional selfie. Right. <laughs> you know, so now another thing on trend, and it seems it's going to grow, there are many food places that are trying to encourage their guests, their patrons to... Okay, make your orders, boom, 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 pay, and then wait for your food. Right. Not forcing it. There still is an option to have someone um, to take your order. But in time, that would probably be the only way once they, because now as a tester, will people, people jump into this? Will they embrace this? And a lot of people do. But then right. there are potential Jobs. Yeah, they don't need that many people up front. Now, the food, they're like, oh, well, the food prep, you need people for that. But I think since two years ago, I saw at a convention where they had um, robots making pizzas, robots making donuts. You know, if anything, you need one person to monitor and making, making sure whatever goo, whatever ingredients is fed into the system. And once it's in there, that's it. Just make sure. So that's one job. Right. Versus several people. So bringing that back to fast food. Yeah. I mean, I see the future. I mean, it's not a lot of fast food is not real food. It's edible, but not really real food anyway. So it's not like we're right. losing any food quality because <laughs> the food quality is a little low anyway. Um, we lose nutrients aspect, right. the vitamins, the minerals, the, the food that we used to eat back in the day mm-hmm. for our body. But now, the more we eat fast food, the more sicker we get, the mm-hmm. more vulnerable we get body-wise, and the overweight because of your body is trying to digest this fast food product. So, well, so what do you think of that? Do you, well, would you feel comfortable with going to a place where all of the food is made, monitored by artificial intelligence? Would you feel comfortable? If it's a fast food joint, mm-hmm. if it's an establishment that actually grows their own vegetables in the right conservative way, and they get the meat or whatever from an actual cow, not a process, then yeah, I'll eat it from there. But if it's going to be processed, then yeah. Well, for the most part. This will all have to have some sort of 
tubing, processing, storing, because, yeah, I mean, that, that'll be, I, I don't see how they could do that totally outside of that, but not impossible because you can grow fruits and vegetables indoors. I mean, that would be more like a fancy restaurant, but I th they could figure out a way and still have robots involved. Now, the other side, when it comes to cleanliness, germs, people coughing, sneezing, rubbing their nose, going to the bathroom, while washing their hands, I could see people embracing robots serving food because, excuse me. Other people's germs on the product. For sure. 100%. That could be a totally huge advantage. I think when originally... People were trying to just see if they can do it. They want to push through to the future. But during the pandemic, it was like, ha, this is not just pushing the boundaries of what we can do in the future. If there's another pandemic, people will embrace robots making the food because of just what you just said. Less germ, you know? But are we really making it less germs? Or because... The thing about it is, it's not the germs itself; it's the germs from other people. Well, because if you, not all germs are mm -hmm. negative, and then you got also germs that are helpful in the world or helpful for it mm -hmm. all for life. Well, a cold. Where, well, like for instance, have you ever went out to eat, and all of a sudden now you have a cold, and now you have a flu? You could technically eliminate that factor. If you're in a sterile, so like here's a whole big room and it's food and the robots and it's, they have filters and all these things to make sure it's perfectly clean, right? right. You, you're not getting, you know, no one's sneezing, no boogers, no runny nose. Um, you're not worrying about someone going to the bathroom, not washing their hands. Um, you could technically be in a sterile environment. And then, boom, you get your food. There's, there's less opportunity to be attacked by germs. Right. Well, not necessarily, because the person that operating the machinery... Well, well, depending on how they set up, they might not have to be even in contact with the robots. They could just hear these things, dump the food in, it's, it's packaged, it's sealed... It never touches any air. I mean, there's, there's ways around it. Yeah. But will people embrace that? I think in another pandemic, they will embrace robots and they'll be just get rid of people, at least on the, for, on the front lines of food prep. Right. Because I like the grill. I'm a griller. I'm mm -hmm. a grill master. Mm -hmm. I grill from meat to vegetables. Okay. So you, you feel me, competition that a robot can grill better than you? It probably still my <laughs> style. I know how to cook it at the right temperature. Right. But sometimes with the thing about humans, we always got that flair mm. in a robot. A robot is consistent. AI is consistent. Humans can switch up. We make a boo boo. We know how to basically fix the boo boo or make the boo boo ten times worse or ten times better. But artificial intelligence mathematically could learn it's your consistent. style and, perf and perfect it. They, they could, yeah, they could learn your style, but they can't put the heart and soul into what you make. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's you know what let's 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 hold that thought. Right. Heart and soul, because I think that's another thing about it when it comes to artificial intelligence, creating, quote unquote, art, whether it's music, film, writing, poetry. Um, will there always be something missing from what they are creating? Yeah. Of course, there's always going to be something missing. Like the human connection, the human purpose of making a song. Because the artificial have no understanding. It's just programmed to create. 
mm. while a person and a human being can read, but they put that twang that I don't know whether it's their heart, their emotions, mm. feelings, because it's always something about art, music, and film. Mm. And a human puts that in, is either remember, is either something that happened in their life, mm-hmm. and they convert it into a music, film, and art. Mm. Whatever. So. I can okay, see that. Yeah, I gotta look at, I mean, I mean, it's, it's interesting because there's so much art that even is not even created by artificial intelligence. And it's exactly. just math. You know, like there are tons of filmmakers that just basically mimic other films or mimic other people's songs. I mean, we talk about that all the time, just personally. Oh, music has never, hasn't been the same. And everybody sounds the same and tons of samples or cloaking. Um, interpolations galore um but they've been winning people winning grammys all the time awards Uh sold out stuff just trash but it's trash because there's no heart in it but then there's so many things winning with no heart in it what would be the difference if a robot created it because ain't no different a Mm. robot created and no heart heart and a copycat with no heart, same thing. Yeah, correct. So it's just about, like, I'd rather be the person that put my heart into the song mm-hmm. and not win an award than win an award and it doesn't have that heart, that soul, that mm-hmm. inspiration, that motivation in order for that to be relevant. I just started smiling because I just thought about something. You know, would it be a point of, did you create this? Did your droid create this? <laughs> you know, where, where... What was the inspiration? What was your thought thinking? What was, what was the message you're trying to send? Mm-hmm. Those are the factors of art. What was the motivation? What was your motive? What was your examples what was your past experience what made you want to create this art well, these are the questions according to let's say self-awareness would that robot would be able to answer that question my motivation was you know so oh it'll be like my motivation right what another human's thought process right Pretty much. Yeah. And but if a human did it, it would be like, look, it was that girl who wrote my heart. And this is my only way to express how I feel. Mm-hmm. And that was the purpose of this art. That's crazy. Yeah. Like, humans have ways to express, express themselves. I think now, because this all falls into what's going on now in this world. Like we just recently, we pray for the family and, and victims for the Louis, uh, Louisville, Kentucky mass Definitely. murder. Mm-hmm. You know, people don't have an out. We all focus on gun, gun, gun. Okay, do anybody else have a hobby, an out, basically express how they feel? how to show emotion without hurting another victim or hurting another person. Because people hurt people. And it's always the ongoing trend. But can people create art in order to make them feel good? Better by mm-hmm. I that that person broke up because I wouldn't have been a billionaire by doing this art because that person mm-hmm. and it, the money because guess what it was done with these hands <laughs> what this mind right. so 
you pay the way you need to become successful. And I know people be looking at me like, why are you putting emotions and relationships in? Because that's the, I would like to tell people that's the whole situation from the game. Get a so little bit closer to, to the uh, microphone. It's like cutting it Okay. Out. That's the whole purpose of the whole the situation. You got people that's hurting. You got people that's hurt mm -hmm. in this world. Whether it's being bullied on a job, bullied at school, whether it's college, high school, elementary. And I'm not making this for them. I'm not. You know, mm -hmm. and I'm not treating them like they're the like they're bad guys. Or they don't deserve better either. These yeah. are human beings, just like you're a human being. Right. I feel sorry for people that got hurt during or murdered or killed. But then you also gotta understand the person that done the action. What was the cause? Well, is it will AI no, be I able to correct that? And and like they're I mean that's like the cornerstone of some of the movies where artificial intelligence looks at all the behavior the non-emotion or the lack of logic in human beings and say, hey, no, we need to do this, so we need to do that, you know? So it's possible. Yeah, be because, because I'm sure with the, mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. you're right. It is possible because you know what? I think what it is is we have became super, excuse me, super lazy in thinking. Mm -hmm super lazy and utilizing opportunities, you super lazy. And I'm saying that not just for the people, but as for me as well, as a human being, we all human beings, we all make mistakes. We all screw up. We all try to find an easy way out, but you know, life is not supposed to be easy. Well, let's go back to when you jumped into right. artificial intelligence to do the portraits, the selfie, right? Right. You saw it. Oh, that was cool. Boom, boom, boom. And it looked great. By the way, like right. the, the, the stuff that you posted, which you, it, it looked amazing. But it's almost the same thing. Well, if I could just press this button, like nobody I know of was inspired to let me draw this myself. Right. I don't know anyone that said, well, let me just do this myself. Because it was just easy it's... just to go boop, and that's it. And it's too attractive. You know what it is? I think part of the issue is we have so many people that are gifted and they focus more on money mm -hmm. besides the art behind doing mm -hmm. what they love. Mm -hmm. I understand that we all have to live. I get that. Even I have to live. I'm an actor. But I think our focus is too much on money. Mm -hmm. Money, money. Money, money makes the world go round. Money is the greatest thing since sliced bread. Money is the opportunistic. Got to make billions of dollars to be ahead of the Joneses. And we'll leave it right there. And um, maybe we'll have a part two of this conversation because it's very interesting. Open the door of money. And really, that's what this AI is all about. Laziness and money. So. Let's leave it right there. Uh, social media. What's your social media? Davion Bussy on Facebook and Instagram and the Shamal Williams Show on Twitch and Twitter. And I'm Michael7Michael. That's the number seven. Michael7Michael on IG. And you can go to geekcaster.com, geekcaster on IG, geekcaster network on Facebook. Thank you so much. And um, keep the conversation going, people, on artificial intelligence do we need it do we want it it's here you're watching geekaster thank you